All right, cool. Well, uh, yes, thanks again. Uh, this is uh, this is exciting. I'm just going to um, kind of pick up from uh, this sort of architecture that Corey's laid out and uh, dig into maybe applications at the cultural level, which he's sort of already intimated a little bit in discussing sort of the sociological, uh, you know, you know, ways that this can manifest. Um, my background is in the humanities, um, and uh, so I'm kind of coming at this more from the the angle of sociology, sociology of knowledge, worldview orientation, uh, values, and uh, meta narrative meaning structures that people make in society based on uh, information in culture. Um, and the argument here will be that we can see this pattern uh, uh, at work at this level of analysis. Um, so just five basic points. This probably won't uh, go as long, maybe just 15 minutes or so, maybe less. Uh, I'm going to try to, again, make the claim that sort of cultural evolution is uh, an instance of this recursive emergence process. Uh, I'm going to talk about the individual collective feedback cycle, as I call it, um, which is sort of the recursive process by which this uh, develops. Uh, there's also what I'm calling the worldview incompleteness approach of looking at this evolutionary process uh, in a recursive way that generates new levels of uh, complexity, hierarchical complexity, uh, in a kind of ongoing, incomplete way. Uh, I'm going to look at metamodernism, which is a, an emerging worldview uh, formulation or paradigm uh, that itself is uh, comes out of this hierarchical complexity process and is also about it. And then I'm going to propose this idea of cultural light cones in the ways that uh, enculturated agents or entities um, have their uh, kind of the goal scope uh, and informational causal power uh, expanded by means of the enculturation process that I'll be describing. So that's the basic outline. So this is uh, this is just a, a line from Bobby's book, uh, The Romance of Reality, in which he talks about the principle of recursive self-organization. And uh, as he'll probably be uh, talking about in a minute, this is sort of a way of thinking about, again, some of that architecture that uh, Corey outlined in sort of abstract terms, but seeing it basically in phenomena in the natural world um, and as a driver of the complexification process that we see uh, in the universe. Uh, you see this across basically all scales of big history. Um, Corey also mentioned the work of uh, Greg Enriquez, who offers a nice map of the complexification process, including uh, specific uh, planes of complexity as they've emerged throughout the complexification process. Um, and this is sort of a, a map of big history that we can look at to examine the ways in which this sort of universal computation process uh, is unfolding through these different uh, forms of information that are coming online through these emergent levels of complexity. So Enriquez talks about the life uh, complexity domain emerging from the uh, from genetic information processing, uh, mind from neuronal information processing, and culture from symbolic information processing. Um, and the claim, I suppose, would be that you can see this architecture of recursive emergence, this architecture of these uh, fractal phase transformations occurring at all these levels of information processing. Um, I'm going to be looking <clears throat> At just the culture level, as I said, um, and to do that, I think we have to talk about enculturation, basically, and culture as process. So enculturation uh, or socialization is basically the means by which individuals in a culture um, come to inhabit uh, and uh, step into the kind of cultural norms, expectations, worldviews of their particular culture. You can think about uh, individuals sort of downloading, as it were, the, the goal states or the norms and values of their culture, uh, the kind of given world model or knowledge and beliefs, certain narrative ideas, narratological, normative aspects, all this sort of a thing, such things that sociologists talk about. Um, and we often think about how indiv individuals, when they enter society through means of education, pedagogy, et cetera, get enculturated into those societies. But at the same time, this actually has another aspect to it in which individuals themselves reflect upon culture and kind of help update those representations that they are enculturated with. Um, and so we actually see that this is really a full feedback cycle in which uh, individuals are enculturated. Uh, themselves, they reflect upon um, the materials and the ideas that they and the values that they were enculturated with, um, take them as objects of reflection, and then uh, put those reflections back into culture by means of which then the enculturation process continues. Uh, and so you get a sort of um, looping and a hierarchical uh, uh, emergence of new levels through this process as this updating of culture continues. Um, sociologists talk about collective representations as being what individuals are essentially enculturated into, but then, of course, individuals make themselves representations of those collective representations. And so, again, this sort of leads to loops that lead to new levels in the language that Bobby uses of recursive emergence. Um, now, so one way you can kind of think about this when you come to the perspective of worldviews that people are inhabiting uh, is that there's a process of decentration that sort of unfolds as a person in a given worldview comes to reflect upon the collective representations of that worldview, uh, and in a sense gets outside of them by objectifying them uh, and enters a sort of new 
space of reflection recursively by means of that initial worldview position. So there's a new vantage that becomes essentially more informationally rich and complex uh, by means of a, a recursive kind of iterating process of self-reflection. Uh, so I want to argue that this is sort of the process by which we see these kinds of architectures that, that Corey was talking about and what Greg talks about with the, uh, uh, recursive emergence uh, unfolding at the cultural level. Um, now, when we're talking about like worldview systems, I think some examples of some major epochal worldviews, we can talk about the pre-modern, modern, post-modern post for now. Here, I just have a little rough, you know, heuristic of sort of uh, this list sort of sources of knowledge, let's say, uh, followed by uh, kind of the boundaries of concern, uh, maybe some of the chief values and some kind of meta narratological orientations that these worldviews might be said to be oriented around. Um, and these aren't just um, sort of theoretical abstract notions. They manifest in cultural production as particular um, uh, art and technology, uh, philosophy, et cetera. Um, so these different worldviews um, are essentially emerging and manifesting critiques, uh, objecting objective critiques of the uh, prior uh, worldview system from which they emerged, the modern critiques uh, and attempts to transcend the, the pre-modern, the postmodern critiques, the modern and attempts to uh, transcend it, et cetera. And so basically, um, you can imagine this as the sort of, uh, you know, worldview incompleteness uh, manifestation of the dynamics we've been naming. Uh, the pre-modern worldview arguably hit a certain kind of axiomatic limit, you could say, sometime in the 17th century, uh, after the many years of wars of religion, uh, the 30 years war um, concluding, uh, and, be, and, and the Treaty of Westphalia often kind of used as a demarcation point at which you can start to see the modern uh, socio-political structure emerging. Um, the modern worldview and its political organization, et cetera, um, beginning to reach limits, axiom, you know, axiomatic limits, you could say, uh, through the development of technologies of global impact that lead to disruptions of the uh, ecological environmental uh, um, domain, uh, leading to existential risk, holding capacity concerns, etc., cetera, uh, which leads to postmodern objectifications and critique of modern uh, presumptions and an attempt to transcend them. Uh, and I guess one of the, ar the arguments that I want to make here is that I think that we are we are reaching and have reached already the limits of this particular worldview system for what it is able to do in continuing this process. Um, and we could get into some of the details of that, but I mean, uh, the relativism actually that Corey named in, in, in his presentation and other aspects make uh, a, a progressive move forward difficult if you're not able to agree to the notion of progress, if you're not uh, able to say anything about notions of truth, et cetera. And so, uh, one of the things that we see emerging now is a meta-modern, a going meta on culture, uh, on the postmodern, uh, as a new worldview system is sort of emerging to meet the adaptive needs of our current moment through this sort of recursive reflective process. And further, I guess I want to make the claim that this emerging worldview, interestingly, seems to be not just emerging from that process, but actually content-wise about that process, that it is a worldview of recursively, uh, of, of recursive reflection, of um, the uh, reflecting upon uh, this iterative process by means of which worldviews and cultural logics themselves emerge. Uh, so there is a kind of nascent metamodern discourse. Uh, discourse at this point is probably not even that nascent. It's probably been around for about 10 years now. Um, and I've been involved with that for almost the duration. Um, writers like Lena Rachel Anderson, but also philosophers, Jason Storm, sociologists, Daniel Gortz, uh, and scientists, not many of which have been named already, um, including Greg Enriquez, uh, Bobby Azarian's written on metamodernism. Uh, and I would argue that the folks uh, doing work in uh, in this lab are also sort of engaging in the sorts of the level of analysis um, at which this is operating. Um, now, one of the um, ideas within metamodern discourse is to actually use uh, the model of hierarchical complexity itself in order to understand worldview uh, recursive emergence in the sense. Uh, Daniel Gortz uh, is a sociologist who applies the logic of recursive reflection to worldview complexification using the MHC. He articulates what he calls metamodern sociology. And this is just a quick representation uh, chart that gives the various stages of the model of hierarchical complexity. Um, and one of the interesting contentions that he makes um, and is worth kind of considering in this context whether we use this model or others, uh, is that you can uh, consider this organization, this coordination of information uh, by means of complexity as a way of understanding uh, symbolic complexification of the information stack as it emerges in culture, uh, in which case you could understand basically that traditional pre-modern worldview uh, as operating at a certain abstract logic, uh, the modern worldview coming along and basically being able to integrate or coordinate that level of uh, those levels of uh, abstraction into variables with specific formal relationships. Uh, and then that in turn being superseded by a postmodern worldview, which is able actually then to see those formal relationships within broader uh, systemic contexts, which is what places us, um, which is what would, you know, sort of situate one in a postmodern cultural logic, let's say, in terms of uh, the 
degree of, of recursive reflection at which they're operating. Um, but of course, as I noted, this has sort of reached its uh, axi axiomatic limits, you could say. Um, but a lot of the logic of systemic level thinking leads to a lot of the cultural manifestations and a lot of the ideological and metanarratological presumptions of the postmodern worldview. Um, and so now the argument would be that um, essentially this uh, is a limitation because to the degree that it's stuck in systems, it's not able to see anything beyond the system. Uh, interestingly, this is, I think, the point at which uh, Godel's incompleteness theorems themselves are presumed to not be able to point to anything beyond the fact that everything is relative. Um, and that's partly what's changing by this move to a metamodern meta systematic approach which is able to see the patterns that govern across systems uh, including worldviews such that we can see patterns like the recursive reflection uh, of uh, fractal phase transformations for example occurring um, in the domain of culture and we can see the patterns by which they emerge and to kind of emphasize a point that Corey made, not only does this offer us a kind of universal measure, which would be helpful for scientists, it actually allows us something very pragmatic and important at the cultural level as we grapple with issues of um, alternative facts and cultural relativism, the uh, the argument that uh, scientific knowledge is just a language game, et cetera. There are many, a number, there's a number of limitations uh, caused by the postmodern approach to truth, logic, um, and certain normative claims that are, are, are where it bumps up against its axiomatic limit. Uh, if we're able to use a meta pattern like this recursive reflective process in order to actually show uh, by means of intrinsic factors how recursively decentered a given worldview perspective is, um, then we're able to hopefully break the impasse and be able to contextualize different forms of knowledge at the cultural level. Um, and so the metamodern perspective is able to see these dynamics uh, and basically put postmodern relativism and, con and context into its own relative context, thereby using the very logic of, of uh, eternal recursion, as I call it, to, uh, to offer some kind of uh, new sense of directionality uh, and even normativity. So that's basically it. The notion of cultural light cones, I'm kind of just playfully suggesting because what I want to basically suggest is that some agents exist at the level of culture, they're processing symbolic information, uh, they're engaging with other cultural agents, and that the enculturation process itself then will be influential in terms of uh, how those agents are able to uh, basically establish the scope of their projected goal states. Uh, what uh, To what degree are uh, so, uh, social or cultural agents able to reflect on um, and, and, and consider and coordinate uh, higher levels of recursive relationality, which will extend uh, further uh, as you move up the level of recursive complexification, if that makes sense. Happy to talk more about that, but I think it's an interesting thing to consider when we're not just talking about uh, cells uh, or, 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 or entities like that, but actual human persons uh, and considering the enculturation process itself as a means of extending and expanding the scope of uh, human normative goal states. So that's basically it. And uh, hopefully I didn't have a best eye on the time, but that's, uh, I can shoot it over to you now. Uh.